can wait a few more minutes. Or we can just start with that track. Yeah. I mean, if you save it and put it on your story, we can do it like yeah. afterwards, right? Yeah. And I can hopefully save it to my phone this time. Hi, I'm Clarissa, for those of you that don't know me, and um, today we're going to be doing a yin yoga series uh, specifically targeting the hips. So um, a block is going to be a useful tool. If you don't have a block, you could use a rolled up towel or blanket. And we're going to take that block and we're going to place it underneath our sacrum, so the bony part um, in between the hip bones. And then we're going to lie back on that. Um, arms out to the side or arms up overhead. Odessa is here and she's going to be helping by demonstrating the postures for us. Um, that way you can continue to hear me while you can also see the posture. Good. And then we want to take our feet together, let our knees go out to the side for butterfly. So we are in reclined butterfly, feet together, knees out to the side. Mm -hmm. So working on opening up the hips, stretching those inner thighs. I still don't like the angle of the camera. Hmm. I guess it's about the best. All right. And then arms can go out to the side, opening up through the front of the chest. Um, maybe the front of the shoulders, maybe you want more shoulder stretch. And so we reach those arms up overhead um, to really stretch more deeply into the front of the shoulder. Good, so if you haven't taken a um, yin class before, we want to um, make sure that we are holding our postures for long. So it's much longer than your traditional, um, there it is, the traditional vinyasa or asana flow. So for here, we still absolutely have a flow. We still have something that we're targeting, that we're working on um, specific postures that are specific to the series. But we move much, much more slowly, um, holding each posture for anywhere to about a minute and a half up to three minutes um just depends on the flow on the series and what we're focusing on that day but when we hold those postures long like that we really stretch deeply into the muscle fiber um, so much much more deep stretch than you would get holding something for 20 seconds when you're holding it for a minute and a half um, stretching also connective tissues such as the ligaments the tendons and helping to realign the fascia so the um, coating that runs around the muscle and through the muscle helps deliver nutrients um, that can get stuck and cause a lot of knots. And uh, we're working to rebalance everything here. So we have about another moment, or sorry, another minute here in, in our posture and recline butterfly. So if you wanna set an intention for your practice today, you can definitely do that. Um, your intention can be really anything. It can be a thought, it can be a feeling, it could be a color. Maybe it's something you want to work on here in the room on your mat. Maybe it's something you're focusing on this week, the month, or even the year. But whatever that intention is, it's yours. And once you have it, I want you to go ahead and seal it into yourself with five full, long, slow breaths. So long, slow inhalations and long, slow exhalations. Hi, Jamie. Good. So once you've completed that last breath, I want you to gently take your hands to the outsides of your knees and bring those knees back together. And then we're going to press through the feet, lift up the hips, and we're going to remove that block. We're going to roll the hips back down onto the mat. And then we're going to draw the knees into the chest, and we're going to um, gently make some great big circles on the ceiling with the knees. We want three circles going clockwise as well as three circles going counterclockwise. So we're just massaging that area where we had the block at. Um, it should feel kind of warm, maybe it feels kind of tingly. 
as that fresh blood circulates there um, in the sacrum where we had the block out. Good, we'll meet back in center with those circles, dropping the feet onto the mat. We're going to gently windshield wiper the knees back and forth a few times, just creating a bit of movement in the hips. And then we're going to gently drop both knees over to the right for a spinal twist. Good. So here you can place a block under or in between the knees if you have any kind of discomfort um, or maybe it's like too much of a stretch or maybe just feels uncomfortable. Um, go ahead and place that block under the knees giving you a little bit of support um, and that can allow you to gradually deepen the posture so that we don't start it out all um, what is the word? I'm sorry, it's been a awfully long day. Um, we don't start it out too intense and have to back off of it. So we want to always start our posture gradually and just allow time and gravity to help deepen our posture as those muscles release and relax. Your breath is hugely important here as well. So we want to work on those long, slow inhalations and long, slow exhalations. Um, so breathing in and then lengthening with your exhale. You have about a minute here, which should be about five breaths. You want to inhale to the count of five. So inhale, two, three, four, five. And then exhale, two, three, four, and five. And again, a few more just like that. Inhaling, two, three, four, and five. And then exhale, two, three, four, and five. Two more, just like that. We're just settling into the posture, lengthening with the exhale, releasing tensions and stresses and tightness as much as you can with every exhale. And then with your next inhale, I want you to gently draw those knees back up to center. And we can windshield wiper them again from side to side. Just creating a bit of movement. <clears throat> and then for a counter posture, it's just same thing on the other side. So we're going to drop those knees to the left for your spinal twist to the left. So again here, remembering that we can use that block if we need some support. Um, or if you want to start your posture out super gradual and then and just deepen it the longer that you're here. Um, arms should be a wide to the side, opening up through the chest. You want your right shoulder worked back onto the mat. Knees closer into the chest is gonna stretch more in your middle back, the thoracic spine. Knees closer towards the front of the room is gonna stretch more in the outer hip and the low back. So depending on your needs, um, depending on your body, what is tight, what needs work today? What should you focus on? So really paying attention to that feedback that your body gives you. And knowing too that it may be different than the last time you did this posture and, and that's okay because we're changing every single day. If you want more stretch into your shoulders, you can reach the right arm up and overhead towards the back of the room. Um, you do still wanna keep that shoulder on the mat, but that'll allow you to stretch deeper into the backside of the shoulder as well, stretching down the lat a little bit. Couple more breaths here. So releasing, settling in. Maybe you just feel heavier against the mat. Good, and then with your next inhale, we're gonna gently and slowly draw those knees back up to center. And we're going to draw the knees into the chest again and make some more of those great big circles. Good. And then we want to switch directions with those circles. Beautiful. Then we'll meet back in center and we're going to drop the feet onto the mat again. Um, so feet on the mat, knees are bent. Can't bring your feet back onto the mat. 
and then we're going to walk our feet wide so that we have one foot on each edge of the mat. No, keep your knees bent. One foot on each edge. There you go. Oh. Yes. So now we're going to do posture for internal and external rotation of the hips. So again, um, maybe gently windshield wipering the knees here a few times, um, just creating that little bit of movement. Good. And then we're going to drop both knees over to the right so the feet stay wide. Yes. Uh, perfect. Um, we always want to make sure that our, our top leg, the leg um, that in this instance it should be on the left side of your mat, is that that knee is in line with the hip bone. Um, it's super important not to let the knee cross the center line of the body. If you are here though, and you feel like this is uncomfortable for the knees, go ahead and place a block under either knee. Um, give yourself a little bit of support. That way you can allow the muscles to relax and the joints stay happy. Um, if you need additional stretch in this posture, totally lost track of the timer now, if you need additional stretch in this posture, um, you can cross the right ankle and stack it over that left knee. That'll press that left leg in a little bit more to the mat. So again, this is a posture for internal and external rotation of the hips. You have external rotation on the right hip and then internal rotation of the left hip. You also have um, stretch on the inner thigh of the right, and you should have stretch on the IT band on the left. Good, got a couple more breaths here, and then we'll move over to the other side. So lengthening, settling in, just allowing time and gravity to help you deepen the posture. Now with your next inhale, we'll go ahead and draw those knees gently back up to center. Nice and slow. Again, if you want to windshield wiper back and forth a few times, please do. If you just want to move into the same posture on the other side, you are also absolutely free to do that. So beautiful, both knees over to the left, feet stay nice and wide, keeping that right knee in line with that right hip bone and working that internal, external rotation. Using that block if you need a bit of support. If you need more stretch, stacking that uh, left ankle over the right knee to so press that knee a little closer into the uh, mat and lengthen more along the IT band. So with the um, internal and external rotation, we do a lot, a lot, a lot in daily life where we have external rotation or opening of the hips. We don't do that much where we have the internal rotation of the hips and things can get really tight and really bound. So this posture is actually excellent um, to help repair some muscle imbalance that you might have. And again, always wanting to come back to your breath, those long, slow, full inhalations and exhalations. And then with your next breath, we'll gently and slowly draw those knees back up to center again. And we'll start to make those, uh, draw the knees into the chest and we'll make those great big circles on the ceiling. So again, three circles going clockwise and three circles going counterclockwise. And we meet back in center and we are going to move ourselves into the figure four stretch so um, stretching more of that outer hip so the right leg the stays bent uh, right foot stays on the floor you cross the left ankle over the right knee mm -hmm. and then you're going to interlace both hands behind the back of the right thigh okay, so you're pulling that right knee in mm -hmm. Head and, and back and upper body and all that um, whole spine should be nice and long on the mat. Um, you're pulling that right knee in 
uh, using biceps. So uh, check in with the shoulders and roll those down and out of your ears. Really use your biceps to pull on that leg. And um, you should have stretch on the outer right hip. No, I'm sorry. The outer left hip and also maybe the inner thigh of that leg. It just depends on where you are holding tension, what is tight today. So lengthening through the whole spine though. So reaching through the top of the head, reaching through the tailbone. And again, starting your posture gradual and just allowing it to deepen as you're here. Long, slow, full inhalations and long, slow, full exhalations. Good, we've got another minute here, so about five more breaths. Breathing some length into those tight areas. Maybe checking in with your jaw and your forehead, making sure we're not storing extra tension anywhere. maybe just a little heavier against your mat. Long, slow, full inhalation to the count of five, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, five. And then we'll go ahead and gently release that leg, um, bringing the left foot back onto the mat. Maybe we want to windshield wipe for the knees a few times. Or maybe we just want to move right into the other side. So same stretch on the other side. So this time the um, right ankle goes over the left knee. You interlace both hands behind the back of the left leg. And you pull that knee in close. So again, checking in with that neck and the shoulders. Make sure you haven't drawn your shoulders up into your ears. So rolling those down. Um, reaching through the whole spine, stretching out through the top of the head and reaching through the tailbone, keeping that nice and long on the mat, using the biceps, the strong muscles of the arms to pull that knee in closer and tighter as you stretch along the outside of the right hip and maybe the inner thigh as well. Long, so full inhalations and exhalations. I know that sometimes as we're here, our mind starts to wander off and that's fine, we're, we're humans, right? But that's, um, just bring it back to right here, to right now, to what you're doing, to this moment, and to your breath. You have two more breaths here. Long, so full inhalation. And long, so full exhalation. Good, with your next exhale, we can go ahead and gently release those legs. Um, you can windshield wipe your knees a few times if you want, or if you wanna just send your legs all the way long and give yourself a couple breaths in Savasana, you can do that too. It is your practice of doing what you need, what your body needs. Really learning to listen to what exactly it is your body needs. We are very good at pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves, but sometimes we are not so good at listening. And then when you're ready, we're gonna roll ourselves up to a seated position. So nice and slow. We'll eventually all meet um, seated. And then we're going to move into a wide leg forward fold. So we wanna take those legs um, nice and wide. Good. 
Now, um, here we want to lengthen through the spine. So we want to make sure that we are sitting up nice and straight and tall, that we are not leaned back, putting pressure on the low back. Yeah. So maybe moving um, the hips out of the way so that you're sitting on those sits bones. Let me see if I can show you. Because you're, you are actually leaned back. So you want to be sitting right on the, the sits bones. So maybe moving things out of the way so that you can feel that you're on the actual bone. And there you go. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And then reaching up and out of the top of your head, finding as much length through the spine as you can. And then we're gonna fold forwards. So you're trying to keep that spine flat. We're not just rounding forwards. Um, we are trying to keep that length in the spine. We're trying to have a lot of stretch on the inner thigh. We do wanna allow our head to come forwards, but we don't want to draw attention to the, to the back or to the, to the neck. So if you need to take a couple blocks and stack them up um, for your head, do you need blocks? Yeah, you can definitely, please use the tools that we have. If you don't have blocks um, available, you could, in theory, use some books and um, just using as many as you, as you need. And then as we're here, we're in our forward fold for three minutes. So we should be able to lengthen there beautiful we want to um, be able to find length with every exhale so as we're here longer and time and gravity are helping us out and we're using our breath and we're exhaling tension we should be able to lower the head more towards the floor so if we have a huge tower of blocks stacked up we should be able to move one of the blocks to a lower level or maybe get rid of one of the blocks um, but again, we don't want to force it. We just want it to happen. Good. Sometimes I like to use the blocks um, and have one as a target. So rather than um, bringing my head to it right away, I'm trying to lengthen to, to that next level. So as you inhale, you should feel that you rise up just a tiny bit. And as you exhale, you should actually feel your head get lower. So it's really using your breath long, so full inhales to the count of five. So two, three, four, five, and then you want to exhale two, three, four, and five. Good, so keeping that length through the spine, um, keeping active through the legs, feeling that stretch through the inner thigh. Just trying to release a little more tension with every exhale. Long, slow breaths in, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, and five. We're almost there, you've got about two more breaths. How much can you lengthen? Inhale, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, and five. One more, inhale, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, and five. And then, with your next inhale, we're going to gently and very, very slowly start to rise back up. Your head wants to come up very, very last, so stacking the vertebrae one on top of the nut. Um, good, and then hands go behind us. You're gonna press through the palms, lift it up through the chest, and then let your head fall all the way back for your counter stretch. Good, so push up more through the chest. Yeah, find that stretch up on the of the chest. You're really arching. So we want um, an absolute counter movement. So really pushing through the hands, lifting that chest up, and letting your head fall all the way back. Good, we'll bring it back to center, nice and slow. Uh, we're gonna move ourselves into tabletop and you can move through a few of the cat-cow. Just kind of warming up the spine. I know cat-cow doesn't have a whole lot to do with um, stretching hips, but we wanna inhale up, yes, and then exhale, round and curl. Um, with cat-cow, we do create movement through the spine, so we're warming up the whole spine. 
lower back has a lot to do with hip pain and vice versa. If your hips are tight, you have a lot of lower back pain. So I do like to have cat cow in the hip series for that reason. It can be super beneficial. So moving at your breath, at your pace, inhaling up into cow, and then exhale round and curl cat. Beautiful. We will meet back in center, and we're going to bring ourselves to a seated position. Okay, so we're going to move into the stacked log pose um, in Vinyasa. Uh, I believe it's called the 90-90 pose. So I'm gonna have you scooch close to the top of your mat. And what you wanna do is bring your shin bone so that it is lined with the top of your mat. Let's do the right shin, sorry. Mm -hmm. So you want your knee to be right on the corner of the mat, like right there on, on that right angle corner, right? And your shin bone should be in line with the top of the mat, good. Then I want you to scoot over to the side a little bit so that your thigh bone is completely in line with the side edge of your mat. So now your leg should be at a 90 degree angle. This is why it's called 90. Uh, sorry, I had an unexpected phone call. Um, then we're going to take our left leg and we're going to bring it around and stack that left ankle about two inches behind the right knee. Now, your left knee may be like three feet up in the air and that's okay. What is important here is, is that we are sitting up as straight and as tall as we can and that um, we are not putting pressure on the low back and that we are trying to sit also um, evenly so that we have equal weight on both of our sits bones and we are not all pushed over to one side. So it should be a significant stretch on the sides of the hip joints, so like on the sides of the hip flexor. If this is not very much stretch for you, you can start to fold forwards. Um, for the majority of the people that I have ever worked with, it is sufficient to stay here and just breathe quite a bit. So long, slow, full inhalations and long, slow, full exhalations. Good. So this is a very good posture though to come back to your intention and to really focus on your breath. So long, slow breaths in, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, and five. And as you're here and you're, you're practicing that breathing and we're gently allowing things to happen, um, your knee is going to get closer and closer to your shin. Good. We have two more breaths. We're almost there. Good. One more. Long, slow inhalation. Two, three, four, five, and then exhale. Two, three, four, and five. You can gently kind of unwind your legs. Maybe you want to stretch them out and shake them out. Maybe you want to dry your knees up and windshield wiper back and forth a few times. Maybe you want to hate me right now. Uh, either way, it's cool. All right. After you've found some um, kind of counter movement, we're going to go ahead and move into the other side. So, yep, left, left thigh bone in line with the edge of the the left edge of the mat, left shin in line with the top of the mat, making sure that knee is right there on that corner, bringing your legs to that 90 degree angle. And then right ankle about two inches above the left knee. And now too is always interesting because you can see if one side is tighter than the other side. You wanna sit up nice and straight and tall. There we go. Beautiful. And again, too, trying to make sure you have weight distributed equally on the left and the right sits bone so that we're not all sitting crooked. We are looking for a pretty good stretch here. If we're not feeling much, 
you can gently start to fold forwards over your legs, deepening that stretch. Good, practicing our breathing, coming back to our intention. <laughs> We're so good, we're almost there. Um, if you have done this and, and your uh, top knee is way, way up in the air, you actually could put a block or two underneath of it if you need to, that way you have some support. And again, you wanna try to work those blocks down though, as we're here. Um, finding that length in the hip. Good. Two more breaths. We're almost there. Long, slow inhalation. Long, slow exhalation. And one more. Inhale. Two, three, four, five. And then exhale. Two, four. Three, four, and five. Beautiful. We can um, gently unwind those legs. You can shake it out. You can windshield wiper. Maybe you just want to be still. Good. And then we're going to gently, um, at your pace, go ahead and move back into tabletop. Top, we're going to move into child's pose. So you're going to send those hips all the way back over your heels, bringing your forehead down to the mat, keeping those arms stretched forwards. So here, um, this is another posture that is again good for the spine, it's good for the low back, but again, here we go back to the um, We go back to the fact that um, sometimes it is good to stretch the low back when you're working hips because if the low back is tight, it can cause pain in the hips. And again, vice versa, if your hips are tight, it can cause pain in the low back. So this just kind of helps to even everything out and to help keep us fluid and, and moving. It also gives you a very good counter posture to the 90-90 as that was a super intense posture. So here as you inhale, you should feel a widening, a lengthening across the lower back. And as you exhale, you should feel it kind of softens and you release some tension. You can bring those hips a little closer to the heels. Good. With your next inhale, we'll gently start to pull it forwards back to tabletop. And then we'll just take it back onto our backs. Good. So we're gonna get nice and long on the mat. Legs are long, arms beside us. And we'll just end our session in Savasana. So maybe taking another quick scan of your body and see if there's any lingering tensions or tightness or resistance or stress anywhere. And just trying to send those away with your exhale as you release some more tension and more stress. Giving yourself just a few more moments here to really appreciate your body, the things that it's capable of doing, a few more moments to focus on, on your needs everything that is not going on right this moment, right here, um, will totally wait. Everything outside will wait. So give yourself just a few more moments here to focus on you and on what you need. to thank each of you that came um, into class today. 
that showed up here and participated. Um, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. I do. Um, I don't really know what's going on with scheduling, but I will be posting another class um, at some point next week where we do another live here on Facebook, same place. Um, I'm just not sure if it's going to be the same time. And I will save this uh, video so that you can come back and view it on the page later at your convenience. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.